I feel like I've been too paranoid in the past, but then now I recognize that at one point I was famous. I was very famous. At least I, I was famous amongst famous people on Twitter. <clears throat> I know that. And I am known by the United States government. And I have said that a lot of people need to die. And then someone, well, not someone, but uh, a, a virus that is very severe is affecting China in a place called Wuhan where there's a story by Dean Kutz about a virus from China. And, and it's also where China's lab is. And I do know that I have a lot of international followers. And I can't help but wonder if someone that... Because I've been reading about engineering bioweapons and... Um, Turns out that it's not as hard as you think, but it is hard, I think. I think it's actually really hard. Um, but it's not as hard as you think, um, if you if you know certain things. And like someone like me, if I decided that that's what I wanted to be into, um, I could do it. And so um, it's kind of like if I wanted to hack someone, like I could do it. Um, it doesn't mean I wouldn't get caught, um, especially if I was trying to hack someone difficult. Um, so, um, let me think here. So I'm worried that people are going to say that you have a weird cult of followers and you inspired someone to use a bioweapon. And if that bioweapon gets to Africa, that's going to be brutal. I do. I, I have, I, 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 I think maybe if I, if, if, if I was president and, um, I, I'd put the World Health Organization in charge and then I would have Bill Gates as my consultant because I know he's been in the vaccine business for a long time. So he understands that stuff a lot more than me. Um, so, but I mean, obviously the CDC would coordinate with the World Health Organization, but this is a global issue. And I, I think that China, China is a tough place to have something like this happen because the way China is, which is I'll put you in jail for rumor mongering when you need to have openness with one, with your people about the problem. Um, all right. So I've been thinking about this and I've been thinking about putting people out of business in the healthcare industry because, um, what I kind of want to do is I want to go take the smartest programmers in the world and I want to, um, put, um, I want to take healthcare people from certain um, companies and I want to take their companies and combine them with the smartest people in the world and make a super duper efficient healthcare system that company, but it's a company that competes with the other healthcare companies. And I know that I would put a lot of people out of business and I don't think it's a problem if we um, put healthcare companies out of business, if we give those people jobs. And I think it's pretty easy to be trained to build this sort of thing, but I don't think everyone's meant to be up here. I think some people are meant to be down here or right in the middle. Um, but, um, that's the thing I am talking about spending a lot of money on infrastructure, which is a lot of jobs. And so I would be surprisingly good for the economy. And, uh, I am talking about massive amounts of foreign investment because I do think that like, um, China is going to be fine after this, um, virus is over. And, I do think that I'm going to be able to partner with them. And I understand that some people are like, you, there's no way you don't understand how much control Xi has. And I do understand that. And I also think that the Chinese um, tend to understand what's in their best interest and what's in their best interest is trying to um, survive. But, you know, I, I, I would like to talk to someone about the temperature. Like what temperature do we have to reach for it to be significant enough that it's beneficial to build up like are we going to get that much more heat or would we rather have lower heat for a longer period of time is the real question and i might be wrong so that might not be the solution but i i i, I put together a list of my inventions god I, I, I didn't want to talk that much but i did invent um an island building company when i was in college um because i wanted to build micro nations where we would actually give you constitutions to and like you could have your own country because you'd be in international waters and we were going to steal the idea from oil. Uh, uh, we we're going to basically build oil filled platforms, but then they were going to look like islands and then you could grow weed out there. <laughs> Let's face it. When I was in college, I was like, Oh yeah, man, I want to grow weed. That's why I'm going to go invent this incredibly complex um, idea. But I also invented a surge protector that um, 
was remote controlled, so it was like a smart house, like a, an easy way to do smart houses. And this was before the iPhone, so there, there was no app. There was a remote control because I wanted to have a smart house with just a surge protector. I invented an adjustable visor for your car that can also move like that and not just like be stuck. Like it's either like there or there. It's like can also like I... I I had the pyramid building idea. I had I invented real indoor skydiving, um, which is basically a tube with holes in it. So um, the air is coming up, which, by the way, I don't think we're going to be able to do HVAC from the top. I think people know that. But um, anyways, it's like you actually skydive indoors, but then um, like you, you there, it's like indoor skydiving, skydiving too, but you, you do it in a tube. Um, I invented this idea of this lightweight host-based network IDS that's like only samples part of the tra traffic. But I feel like someone else has done that at some point. But um, blockchain voting system invented that because really all you have to do is like every like certain amount of votes, you write it to a file and you can append those files, but you can also have them separate. I don't know how I, it really depends on how big you want each blockchain to be. All right. So I inv invented a toilet seat lifter upper that's like remote controlled, but also one that you can step on. But that was at the same time that someone else invented that. Um, so the Japanese would love me for that one. Um, I invented the idea of charging batteries with friction from um, elevators weight when you're going down. Um, and I, I thought that if you design the elevator a certain way and the elevator is very, very, goes very, very high, then on the way down, every time you could use, uh, you could actually charge and store that in a battery. I um, popularized, I didn't invent it, the idea of automated memory forensics for intrusion detection. I invented the cult of Athena Aphrodite. Uh, I popularized the idea of having a secret algorithm used only by a central bank to produce a cryptocurrency that can be used to exchange large sums of money between banks. So basically, it is a digital currency, but um, it's it's a digital currency that is is issued by a central bank. But it's still, but it's not, but it but it could be blockchain. Um, but it really, like, it really depends on you, your opinion. Um, but but really. I don't. I don't think I invented that idea though, because it's. But I'm sure Swift is better. I, Swift is what they use to exchange money. Okay, I invented the idea of having a second green currency, um, like you know, like the second currency idea for stimulating our economy, which is like a universal living wage. But I've also been thinking about um, a, having that as a way of exchanging money between people. So say that you're like, I'm going to exchange money between people. Um, you, if you, if it's if it's one on one between phones. I feel like it, like you could, it would be a lot. Um, you have a less of a safety issue. Like you could scan your faces, and like you have to take your picture together. But um, why can't we exchange money hand to hand in a digital way? Um, is my is my real question because I understand having restrictions on exchanging money digitally because like especially because like I'm gonna buy something on on Craigslist from Massachusetts and you're gonna mail it to me. Um, maybe we need restrictions on that uh, where you're like really paying attention who's who, but um, if you're in person, shouldn't there be a digital way of exchanging money? And I don't think that has to involve um, the blockchain algorithm, but um, it could. But um, it, it, but um, yeah, so, but I definitely think that if we're going to have a second currency, we should have a way of exchanging it in person um, because I do think that it should be a pretty dominant currency, especially if, if we're trying to shift people towards using recycled or, or reused um, items.